We're talking about how to maintain and care for your soldering tips to make them last for ages on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Anyone who does much model railroading eventually has to do some soldering. And those of you who maybe are newer at soldering, not as experienced, have probably dealt with the frustration of a soldering tip that just won't get hot enough to melt the solder and make a quality joint. Well, the best way to alleviate the problem of a poorly performing soldering tip is to prepare it and maintain it properly. Well, today I'm going to show you how to both prepare and care for and maintain a soldering tip, whether it's brand new or whether it's one that you've had in your soldering iron for some time. Have you had problems with your soldering iron performing like you'd like it to? Tell me about your experiences in the comment section down below. Now let's head over to the workbench. I'll show you a brand new soldering iron that I just got for Christmas, as well as one that I've had for years, and we'll talk about how to maintain both of them. Today we're going to talk about how to prepare and how to maintain a soldering iron to keep it in excellent working condition and uh, to make your not only your iron but especially your tips last for a long, long time. Uh, I'm working with a couple of soldering irons today. For Christmas, uh, I received this new Weller soldering station. This is a variable heat uh, that goes from, I believe it's 5 up to 40 watts which means it'll be good for soldering everything from um, rails if I'm you know soldering some some rail sections together at the you know before I put them on the uh, layout uh, all the way down to electronic circuitry so we're going to open this up and we're going to prepare this soldering iron uh, for use and uh, do it in a way that uh, will make it last a long time. I'm also going to be working on cleaning and reconditioning my old soldering iron. Uh, this is also a Weller. This is a 30 watt soldering iron, just a single heat. And uh, my plan is to keep the soldering station here at the workbench and, and use it here and to use this as the soldering iron that I use out on the layout. The one thing I like a lot about this particular soldering iron is it has three LED lights uh, here in the front end of it, so it gives you some nice light if you're working in some dark corners. Uh, the tip on this uh, uh, soldering iron is, is not horrible, but it, it could use some cleaning, and so we're going to clean it and tin it and, uh, and just do some maintenance on it today. So to start off with, we're going to open up our, our, our Weller station here. and The station, you can see, has an, an on-off switch right here, has a variable uh, heat knob in it. And then uh, right here, a place to plug in a soldering iron. Of course, this soldering iron can be used apart from the station. You can plug it in and just use it as a single heat, and uh, it will work as a 40 watt iron at, at you know at full temperature if you uh, if you do that. Um, also, you're going to notice in the station itself we have this uh, this little sponge, and we're going to talk some more about that in in just a, a moment. Um, as we prepare this new soldering iron, and then also as I work on cleaning and maintaining my old one, I want to tell you the things that we're going to need now that we've got this station out and open. Um, to, to maintain and to prepare a soldering iron tip, we need, uh, so first of all, some flux. Uh, I am using a paste type flux. I, I prefer that. Uh, this is a rosin paste flux. And this is a flux that has acid in it. The acid, I know some people prefer acid-free flux for, for certain applications. Uh, but the acid uh, works to clean the surface that you are, uh, are soldering. And in this case, uh, the tips that we are tinning. So we need some, need some flux. Uh, we need some solder. 60-40 uh, rosin core solder. The size doesn't matter. Um, but uh, we need some solder. I'm going to be using a piece of steel wool. Um, you can also use uh, as an alternative, or you may use both. I'm going to use both. I also have a, a brass sponge in this little uh, uh, Hacko holder and cleaner. These are great for cleaning soldering tips. I'm going to show you something about using these in, in a few moments. And uh, these I highly recommend. 
And if you don't have one, I'd recommend you get one. And uh, you can find a link to this in my pick of the week uh, in this description down below this video. And then, of course, the sponge that I showed you. A sponge is, is, uh, is uh, important and handy to have. And then uh, if you'll notice this little round cup uh, in my old soldering holder, this is actually some uh, tinning and cleaning solution. Now, you can tin and clean your tips without this solution. Uh, I, I have some. I call it a solution. It's one that's cold. It's actually hard. Uh, but this does help clean and tin your tips. I, I, I don't use this alone. I kind of use this in conjunction with uh, some other processes, and I'll show you more about that in just a moment. But I've got just a little piece of cardboard here that I'm going to use to work over just so I don't get hot solder down on my, uh, on my cutting mat. Um, to prepare a, a, a new soldering iron or a new soldering iron tip, what we want to do is we want to tin it. Uh, and the reason why that's important is because the number one enemy of the soldering process is oxidation. And um, as you know, as you, as you may know, metal uh, heat promotes oxidation in any kind of metal. And the tips that, that we use, as they get hot, as they stay hot, they will tend to oxidize. Tinning them or uh, will help protect them from oxidizing and help keep them shiny and, and in good working order. If a tip gets oxidized, if it starts to turn black, the, that part of the tip is not going to transfer heat properly and you're not going to be able to use it to get good soldering joints. So you want to keep the, the working part of your tip shiny uh, so it'll keep transferring heat. Now I know a temptation, and I just want to address this right, right now, uh, there is a temptation that we have when we see a soldering tip begin to turn black and begin to get a little oxidized, you may be tempted to take uh, some, some sandpaper or a steel brush or something and, and just aggressively clean that stuff off. I'm going to t tell you, do not do that. You're going to destroy your, uh, your soldering iron tips. Most of the tips that we buy these days are an alloy metal covered with a coating. And if the coating comes off, that alloy metal uh, gets exposed, they're not going to transfer heat properly and they're going to oxidize much, much faster. So do not use the sandpaper or, or those scratching methods. Um, keep your soldering iron tip uh, tin, uh, tinned, keep the tip tinned, and, uh, and then you can clean it in the way that I'm going to show you in just a few moments. Okay, the first step for this new soldering iron, again, this is not turned on, it's cold iron, and um, to tin this, we're going to use uh, some solder itself. And literally what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take a piece of solder, and this may be more than I need here, but I'm going to cut off a piece of solder here. And we're going to start right at the very tip of my soldering iron tip, and I'm just going to wrap this around the tip. And I'll try to keep it up here where you can see what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm going to wrap it really tight and also make sure the wraps are really close together so it is just completely covering that tip. Make sure that it goes all the way out to the end. Again, obviously I'm doing this while the soldering iron is cold, otherwise I would be seriously injuring my fingers right now. And you don't have to go all the way down the tip, uh, but I try to go at least halfway down. This is a fairly short tip, so I may go a little further than that. Um, there, I'm, I'm, just, I'm about a half an inch down the tip. Uh, again, I want to make sure it goes all the way out to the end. And I'm just going to cut that excess off. Don't throw that away. That's, that's good solder. You can, you can use that. Uh, I'll keep that with my other solder. In fact, we'll use that up before we're done today. Okay, there, you can see that I've got my, my tip nicely wrapped um, for, uh, for the process of, of tinning my, my soldering uh, my tip. And now that I have it nice and tightly wrapped, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my soldering iron on. And uh, I'm just gonna wait for it to come up to temperature. And as it comes up to temperature, it's going to melt that solder and it's going to melt it onto that tip. And that solder is going to actually seal that tip uh, and protect it from oxidizing. Not sure if you can see, but on the ends, the flux uh, began to bubble out of the, uh, the solder 
before the solder started melting. And of course that flux helps the solder to stick to uh, the, the surface itself. By the way, you see that smoke. It's a good idea to do this in a, a well-ventilated area. Um, and then I can literally even come down here and just dip my soldering iron into some of that um, solder that is down here on this cardboard. And uh, you see i got a nice bubble of, of solder there. And uh, I just want to coat it really, really well. And you want to always leave your soldering iron when you're done with it for a session, when you're done for the day. You want to leave it coated uh, with solder because that is going to protect it from oxidizing uh, while it's not in use. And just sitting in the air and drawing moisture uh, and access to oxygen will allow the soldering tip to, to oxidize. So you want to leave it coated with solder. And there you see I've got a really nice coating of solder on, uh, on that soldering tip. And that is tinned and it is ready to be used. So now I'm just going to turn my soldering iron off and we're going to put it in its holder here and allow it to uh, to just cool naturally and and that will protect it. Now we're going to uh, kind of shift gears here and uh, we're going to look at my old soldering iron and uh, and the tip on it. We're going to retin it but I'm also going to show you uh, some things that you can do and that you should do to help make your soldering iron tips last a long time uh, and help keep them from from oxidizing. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do, now again, if you, as you look at this tip, you'll see it, it's not in horrible shape. It's pretty black down here, uh, but the tip is, is fairly shiny. It's got a nice coat uh, of, uh, of, of solder on it. Uh, but we're going to treat this as if it was getting pretty black and it was really, really not transferring heat well and uh, we needed to, to retin and recondition this. And so to begin with, we're going to do the same process that we did with the new soldering iron. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap uh, this with some solder, and uh, that'll be how we begin the process. But we're going to do a little more to this tip than we did to that new one, uh, just to, to kind of, again, to kind of recondition it. Now again, I didn't say it, but obviously I, I did this while the soldering iron was cold. It hasn't been plugged in yet. Um, but now that I've got it wrapped, I'll do the uh, same as I did with the soldering station. Just going to plug this soldering iron in, and we're going to uh, let that solder melt. You can see the lights in this soldering iron that I like so much because they do help a lot when you're working in uh, shadowy or dark areas, which on a model railroad layout can, can be really, really handy. And there the solder is beginning to melt. Notice how it's melting most quickly up along the tip where the tip was already shiny. Uh, again, that's because the heat transfers so much better through that shiny part of the tip that's not oxidized. And now it's beginning to melt even down on the oxidized part and there we go. And once again, we can kind of make a pool of, uh, of solder here that we can kind of use to condition that. But now that I've, I've got that, this is the, the part that will help us recondition this tip. I'm going to take this steel wool, and this is just a piece of clean, uh, fine steel wool. I don't want it pretty thick because I don't want to burn my fingers. And I'm just going to rub it along the tip just quickly and that's going to help to remove a little bit of that oxidation and then I'm going to take my tip and I'm just going to dip it right into uh, this solder. It's a, br a brand new uh, a brand new tub of, of uh, flux but uh, I'm going to just dip my tip right in there and let it get plenty on there and uh, we're going to make some smoke and then I'm going to take some more solder and I'm just going to apply some more solder to this tip and especially I'm going to try to apply it in the, to the areas that are uh, that have been oxidized um, see I can it applies really easy to that shiny part it doesn't need so much reconditioning but uh, still working to get it to apply up here on this part I'm gonna let it burn 
all that flux off and see if we can get a little solder on that. It's just not melting on there. So again, now that I've got some flux on there, I'm just going to take our steel wool and uh, clean it some more. Again, do this carefully. Make sure you've got a thick layer of steel wool and do it quickly. You do not want to burn your fingers doing that. And then each time you do that, then stick it back in the flux for a second. And then uh, apply some more solder. And I'm still having a hard time adding solder up here to this upper part. Uh, it's not really necessary for me to do so because really the tip is what you use when you're soldering. Uh, I'm just trying to get some of it to apply there so you can see kind of how you do this on, there it's doing some, how you do this on a tip that had gotten pretty oxidized. Okay. And we're just going to keep doing that until we get solder to stick to all of the parts of the soldering iron that we that we need. In this case I've got a good oh quarter inch, five sixteenths of an inch that is nice and shiny and it is very shiny. It's well coated. So uh, so that, that's in good shape to, to, to solder with at this point. Uh, you could go a little bit higher but really not completely necessary. The important thing is you want to try to keep your tip in shape like this. Uh, and there are some things that you can do each time you use your soldering iron that will help maintain the life of your soldering iron tip. So let's talk about that for just a moment before we, we finish up here. Whenever I first turn on a soldering iron, when I'm going to do a, a soldering job, the, the first thing that I do when my soldering iron gets up to temperature is I'm going to clean it. So when I do that, when I'm doing my, an actual soldering job, that's when I use uh, this brass sponge. And this is literally just a big ball of, of brass shavings that comes from the machining shop. And again, uh, you can buy uh, these holders and the brass sponges and refills uh, from a number of places. But uh, I'm going to include a link to them in my Amazon Pick of the Week down below where you can pick one up. So the first thing I do is I literally clean and tin my soldering iron when I first turn it on. And so I clean it first by, by just, uh, once it's up to temperature, just running it through the brass sponge several times. And then for the sake of maintenance while I'm working on soldering, that's when I use this, this uh, uh, tip tinning and cleaning solution. And again, your tip has to be hot in order to kind of melt this. But you see, you put this in here and it just melts a little bit of that solution. And it does the same thing as what we were just doing, only in a, in a fairly quick manner. It's a, there's some flux and some solder and some, some other cleaner in there. Uh, and so as I'm working, that helps to keep my tip in, in, in good condition. And after I do that, then I clean it a little more. That's the first thing I do when I turn on my soldering iron before I do any soldering is I clean and tin it. Another way to clean your soldering iron tip if you don't have a, uh, a brass sponge is to use just a plain damp sponge. That's why this sponge comes with the, uh, uh, the, the Weller uh, soldering station and you saw it as I took it out of the box. It was very very flat and thin. Uh, I put a little water in it and as you see it really uh, took on some life. You know, it's a big, big, thick sponge. Uh, your sponge that you use, it can be any sponge, uh, but you, you don't want it to be soaking wet. You just want it to be damp. And whenever you've uh, finished soldering, uh, then you can simply come in with your hot soldering tip and just wipe it a couple of times across the sponge. And you can see that went from dull to, to shiny very, very quickly and takes off, you know, any excess solder, but also oxidation off of the uh, off of the tip and so this is a, you know an alternate way of cleaning your tips as you are doing the soldering as I am soldering say I'm working on rail out on the layout or uh, working on some project here at the workbench every time I do a soldering joint I will come back and run the, the uh, soldering tip through uh, the brass sponge just to clean it off. That'll clean off any oxidation, clean off any 
any you know excess flux or or other debris that you might have picked up in the process of soldering every joint i clean it and i run it back through the soldering uh the tinning solution and cleaning solution clean it again i do that every single time now that may seem excessive you may think oh that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort but my tips last a very long time uh, if you don't do this, I promise you, your tips are going to get oxidized within a very short order and they're not going to work for you. You're going to be replacing tips often. But if you'll do these things, keep your tip tinned as you're working, uh, it will really prolong the life of your tip. Then, whenever I am finished soldering, when, I, when I'm getting ready to unplug the solder and put it away for, for the day, uh, I come back again after my last solder joint. I run it through the, the cleaning and tinning solution, clean it with the brass sponge, and then before I uh, put it away, I'm going to take some actual solder and just melt some solder right onto the tip and uh, leave it just like that, and I'm going to unplug it right there, uh, and it is ready to be put away. So those are some things that you can do to prepare a new soldering iron for use that will make it last a long time, that will help you recondition a tip that maybe has gotten a little old and a little bit oxidized, and that will help keep your tips working well for a long time with just a little maintenance and care as you use them. Keeping your soldering tips properly tinned, cleaning them before you use them and after each soldering joint, making sure that you keep them tinned whenever you put your soldering iron away after a job, will help your tip last for a long, long time and keep it performing reliably. So I hope you'll incorporate these tips into your soldering process as you use soldering in your model railroading endeavors. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more model railroading videos I know you'll enjoy as well. I hope you'll check that out. Also, take a look at the description down below where you'll find links to my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week where you'll find that brass sponge, as well as my Patreon page and places where you can connect with me on social media. Well, be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you more great model railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tin, Lizzie?